Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a rich, velvety eggnog pudding, or as some people like to call it, eggnog custard. To make this absolutely delicious Christmas eggnog pudding, you will first have to make my creamy eggnog recipe, which is a cooked, not a raw version of eggnog, as most homemade recipes tend to be. And the reason I prefer this version is because it is safe for small children and especially pregnant women to enjoy. Because we're approaching the Christmas season, you may be interested in some more sugar-free, keto, low-carb, gluten-free, in other words, healthy Christmas desserts, such as these really cute gingerbread people, which by the way, go exceptionally well with the pudding. For more Christmas dessert ideas, please check out the end links where I have posted some of my other eggnog-based dessert recipes. And for your convenience, please check out the description box below the YouTube thumbnail where I have posted the formatted eggnog custard written recipe. And for my international viewers, all of my recipes can be translated to many international languages so you can read them more easily. The macronutrient ratio for the eggnog pudding is 8.7 to 1 with 4.2 grams of total carbs, 0.4 grams of dietary fiber, resulting in 3.8 grams of net carbs per very generous serving. As I've mentioned, the very first thing is to make sure that you have made your homemade eggnog. The rest of the steps are very quick and easy, so let's get started. Begin by measuring out the eggnog and pouring it into a heavy saucepan. After which you add the heavy whipping cream, and the sweetener, which I ground to a very fine confectioner powder. Here you have an option. You can either add your rum extract or if you prefer an alcohol of your choice at this point, because you've added it now and due to the cooking, the taste will be much milder and more subtle. However, if you like a stronger rum or alcohol flavor, you add it after you take it off the heat. And due to the cooking, if you have used alcohol, it will be de-alcoholized. So again, it's more appropriate for children. The next thing I'm going to do is drop in my butter. I know some recipes say add it after you've cooked the custard, but I like to add it now because I don't like the raw taste of butter coming through my pudding. Then sprinkle the cinnamon powder on top. Get your egg yolks and give them a light whisk and then pour them into the pot. Having added everything, it's time to stir all the ingredients really well and place the pot over medium-low heat. It's really important that while you're cooking, you're stirring slowly and constantly and do this until the pudding starts to thicken. You'll know the custard is done when the custard is thick and coats the back of the spoon and if you run your finger down, the line stays clean. At this point, your pudding is done and it will be smooth and velvety. However, if you really like that nice thick custard, all you have to do is add this optional ingredient, which is to sprinkle a little bit of glucomonium powder on top of your custard and stir it in immediately. Then cook for one more minute just to integrate it. The cooking time at a light simmer will vary, but it usually is between five and seven minutes. When your pudding is done at the thickness that you like, then just simply remove the pot from the heat and while your pudding is still very hot, strain the pudding through a fine mesh sieve. This will remove any lumps in the pudding. After you have strained your pudding and while it's still hot, before it sets, distribute the pudding into individual serving dishes. In order to prevent a film from forming on your custard, cover the custard with cling wrap making sure the cling wrap touches the custard and transfer the custard into the refrigerator where you can leave it for two to four hours or even overnight. The taste does develop a little bit better if left overnight. The pudding is ready to go, but since it's the holidays and before serving, I like to whip up a batch of heavy whipping cream to a stiff peak stage. And because it's Christmas, I'm going to put the whipped cream into a piping bag, which I have fitted with a decorative tip and then just spiral it around to make a nice cone shape in my glass. Lastly, top the whipped cream with a sprinkle of either grated nutmeg or cinnamon. And if desired, drop a few sugar-free cranberries or candied cranberries on top. 
These will add a little bit of seasonal color. For planning purposes, I want to let you know that this custard can be made up to two days ahead. Just keep the custard covered as I've described and only add the whipping cream and the rest of the garnish just before serving. If you like eggnog, especially homemade eggnog, which is so much better than store-bought, I hope that you will find this recipe something you may want to serve this Christmas. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. Your time and support is extremely important to me and I thank you for that. Since we're coming up to Christmas, I would like to wish each and every one a very Merry Christmas and all the best for a happy and healthy New Year.